So welcome everybody. Uh, nice to see you here. Take, uh, thanks for coming to this webinar. Um, my name is Britta Houston and I'm the president of Women Federation for World Peace in Sweden and the co-director together with Vigdis Parkins for the North region. And uh, today I want to, to introduce you to a wonderful woman that I got to know this summer. And uh, it's uh, this webinar tonight is part of a series of webinars we have once a month uh, that highlights an, uh, one woman, a special woman that has a lot to share of experiences uh, from her life, of difficulties that has, she's been through and how it has strengthened her determination and stamina uh, women Federation has for many years wanted to empower women to take on leadership roles in different on different levels from grassroots level to uh, high power positions in the society as a essential and important and necessary step towards uh, creating a peaceful world. And um, just two days ago, we had the launch of the Women Federation's uh, curricula called The Women's Way, which we feel will be a, a very important um, tool for us to use in educating uh, many, many people in the world, around the world. But today we have uh, her story, and I'm very happy to, to have my friend, uh, Nargis Hassansani Mumandi, uh, Mumand Hassansani, <laughs> sorry, uh, Nagis, here, and to hear her story. Uh, she's an amazing uh, person. Just a little more than a year and a half ago, she was a well-known professor at a university in Kabul in Afghanistan, uh, very involved in various uh, um, um, activities and educational programs and um, she she has also written several books and in 2018 she actually was awarded with the best the best book of the year uh, her uh, fields have been journalism literature and uh, communication <laughs> so uh, nargis where are you? There you are. I want to let you tell us your story and how what you've been through and how we can learn from you. Yes, please, Nargis. Can you unmute? Does it work? Mitty, can you help to unmute? Oh, let's see. Some technical problem here. Or should I unmute you? No. Let's see. It's not working. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was also unmuted. <laughs> yeah. So, hi and uh, salam. Uh, salam to everyone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, thank you for inviting me. Thanks from WFWP for inviting me and in her story. And uh, thanks from every one of you. It's kind of and that it's a kind of pleasure for me to be with you. So as uh, I'm seeing some faces that I had already met them in Cyprus. Uh, so it's very lovely and I love to meet you all once again. So once again, thanks for inviting me. So yeah, I am Nargis. I am Nargis Moman Hassanzai. Uh, 
I'm from Afghanistan and um, um, I was university professor and as Brit also said that uh, I was director for media and public awareness and I had several works around but um, you know uh, when um, WFWP uh, just requested me to be and uh, here and to talk about my story so I was just thinking that um, what should I say and from where should I start what I have to say uh, sometime maybe um, I'm sure that um, one who are in this meeting maybe m several of you are elder than me and of course you maybe a lot of you have more experience than me I'm sure that but sometime you know um, your life become like um, However, you're not at that age, in this elder age, but you had experienced different things in your life. And uh, you had the, this experience made you a little bit older. So I'm not that old, but <laughs> and uh, I'm in medium age still. But uh, the, the life that I was through, it makes me a little bit more experienced and it makes me a little bit older. Sometimes when some people are asking me that, okay, Nargis, how old are you? So I say, okay, just guess how old I will be looking. So the good point for me is that when I'm asking them, so they say, no, what age that I had, they say, no, five or six years smaller than that. So I become happy. I say, oh, wow. So I, I'm looking not that old. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I think so inside me is not a young girl uh, like not like me, maybe inside me is someone older. And uh, as I say, the reason is that uh, I had experienced different things around in my life. I had experienced different things in my life from my childhood till today. Uh, so as I say, I really don't want to, uh, I don't know from where should I start and uh, what should I say you, but uh, so my friend requested me that I have to talk about my past life and I have to talk about today, how it is going on. So at first I will say that I usually don't talk about my past. The reason is that uh, I love to study new books. <laughs> I don't love to study the books that I had already done. I usually like, like to I mean study the new ones and to have experienced the new one. But... Uh, Maybe sometimes some old books are uh, somehow like inspirable for some people. So I don't know how much it will be for ladies like you or for anybody who is watching me, who is seeing me. But uh, uh, so that's why I just decided that maybe if any, if my friends thought, if my friend is thinking that maybe my story could inspire anybody. So for sure, I will just say and i will just start that from where did i start so as i told you i'm from from afghanistan so afghanistan i'm sure everybody of you know that what is afghanistan how is afghanistan and it is a country that now um from the basic of the basic rights of going to school is forbidden from the girls uh, for, means the, uh, the 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 work the woman cannot go to work women cannot go to park women uh, girls cannot uh, uh, means have their uh, exam as we say like concord exam or an intense exam to be to go, get to university they could not go to park they could not get go to gym they could not go to parlor so there are several 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 and several been now around and women so it is somehow like now it is on afghanistan but my country is unfortunately it's a country that from last several years it is like this but maybe the situations are somehow different so i was born in a country that it was always war and i born in war and um, still i am but good that now i'm not in my country so when I was born in Afghanistan, so that was also the time that we were, I means that was also fighting time, that that was also means the time that we had war. So we were forced to be refugee to, for a few years uh, to Pakistan. So 
we went to Pakistan for my, for a few years because my parents were worried for me that uh, they don't want their daughters to means uh, to be uh, far away from school or from education. So we went to Pakistan and we were in Pakistan for a few years. Means I was somehow I had my fifth and like somehow fifth and sixth class and. Um, in Pakistan, and then uh, we go to Af we go back to Afghanistan, and I was in Afghanistan till the end of the uh, means 2021. I was there. I means I came to Germany. Now I'm in Germany from last to one year and few months. I'm like now living in Germany. So. Um, um, my father was a doctor. Uh, my mom was a teacher. Uh, my mom was a bachelor degree. Um, my father was, of course, he was a P, um, uh, means he has his uh, um, a professional, means he was a professional doctor of army base, and my father was an army. He was working in defense ministry on that time, but uh, when we go to Pakistan and we came, when we came back, so again, he was working in defense ministry. And um, my mom uh, was the only educated woman and had lost family. Mm -hmm. And um, we, um, means in Afghanistan, usually people living in, in a joint family and they are living like, if they have 10 brothers, if they have five brothers, if they are uh, three, four, five, they are all living in one family. So my mom was also one of them. We all were living in a joint family and um, my mom was the only one that she was working. She was an educated woman. So I was the daughter of an educated woman and uh, uh, um. I was the lucky one that my mom always supported me and she wanted me to go to school and to have uh, my education and around. So, so that the means the different stages of my life happened, my life happened that um, everyone have different families, different, uh, like uh, um, the thoughts of the people that they have. So, Unfortunately, that um, in my life means this bad condition comes a little bit sooner in my life. So first time I was um, in third class that uh, I heard that uh, my grandfather uh, had uh, sold me. As, uh, as in Afghanistan, it was sometime means they were selling their daughters and they were selling their um, like granddaughters or anybody and um, of course i don't think so now it's in germany that uh, grandfather have that much authority but in afghanistan it was not like this so first time i was in third class that uh, i hear that i am sold and my uh, grandfather had already talked about uh, about me uh, to get married to a person that uh, I had really, I, I don't know who is he and who, how will he be, uh, how will be he looking, but um, so just think I was in third class. So mm -hmm. it was means when it happened in my life, so I don't know, but um, my mother and my mom was just means she was a little bit worried. So I just see in my house, sometime it happened, she was just crying and crying. So I was just asking, okay, mom, why you were uh, I uh, mean, why you are crying? What happened to you? But she, she was always said that uh, it doesn't depend to you. I'm not crying. I am okay. Everything is okay on my side. But once, one a day, I just hear that my mom is talking with my aunt, means the sister of my brother, that no, I will never let her. I will never let her. I will never let Nargis. I will never let Nargis. So I say, oh, I, I will just take my hair like this. Okay, what is she talking about? Hmm. So I was just a little bit more curious. Uh, then I understand that she, okay, yeah, she said that um, I will not let Nargis to be sold. Means I will never let her to be sold. Enter Nargis is educated by her own self, and Enter Nargis could choose a husband for the, for her own self. So this thing, on that time I was, I was in third class. So maybe I will be around maybe nine years old or 10 years around that. So just think that how will be the mentality of a nine uh, year or 10 years old girl. So I was very upset and I was just crying and I was talking with my mom, why it happened like this? Why it happened like this? My mom said, you don't talk. I will solve it. I will solve it. You don't have to talk about this. So means the situation of my house was getting worse day by day. And it was... Uh, it makes me very, very sad. Uh, means I still remember the days 
I still remember the days like yesterday it happened in my life that how was the situation of my life hmm. so I don't I don't want to make the story longer but uh, one Saturday I just hear that my mom solved this problem with my grandfather and she said that no you could never uh, let my daughter I could never sold my daughter until she is elder by her own self so my grandfather told him that no I have already talked with the pupil and I have to now I have to now marry her with a person that I had already talked but uh, my mother was refusing and refusing so in this time I got my cousin, the daughter of my uncle. Uh, the wife of my uncle was an illiterate woman. She was not educated woman. So she also have a daughter, but her daughter was three years, uh, el- means I was three years elder than her. Um, she was smaller than me. So I was in third class, she was in first class. So unfortunately that uh, my grandfather decided, okay, that. Um, of course, my mother was not letting me to be sold. So, um, and my grandfather was more authoritized by her other uh, daughter-in-law. And she finally decided, he finally decided that my other cousin will be instead of me. And she will be made it to the person that I was supposed to marry him. So it happened like this. And um, my cousin was... Um, instead me she got married with that person and it was only because of my mom because my mother don't let my grandfather to me to be sold and um, yeah so it just finished like this and just see me now so first time it happened like this and uh, second time it happened when I was in seventh class. So uh, the reason that uh, it was always happening with me, it was because I was the elder of my family and I was the elder daughter of my family and my uncle's family. So second time, once again, it happened in my life while I was seven years old. Uh, and again, one of my uncle, he just said that, um, I, he just talked with somebody that this time, yeah, so Nargis is getting elder, so I have to do something. And he just talked with somebody and he just talked about everything. And he just said that, yeah, so everything is okay. And we are going to sell Nargis this time. So once again, my mother was the one who don't let him. And he said that, no, never. I will not let my daughter to be sold. So this was second time. And uh, I remember that days too. Mm. So just think how will be the mentality of a seventh class girl. It's just like children. Well, we it's it's impossible to imagine for 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 me you know this kind of situation Nargis and yeah and for your mother her situation oh, oh, so my mother my mom was uh she was a very strong woman uh, she was really a very strong woman and the the uh, the 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 thing that it was making her stronger was her uh, uh, her logic and her education because she was an educated woman. As I told you that she was the only educated woman on that time and, and her last family. So it was the second time and third time it again happened when I was in ninth class. So uh, and in ninth class again, I, it happened from one of my uncles that he tried, he talked with somebody and he said that, yeah, everything is okay. So Nargis is getting older. She is in ninth class. She's 15 or 16 years old. But uh, again, uh, the lucky is me that my mom was aware of the situation earlier and she once again stayed uh, in front of me just like a, like, like a superman for me on that time. And she said that, no, never. So in this time, I had, um, I just forget to say that I have two brothers and three sisters. We are, I'm the old, old elder one and I have one elder brother elder than me. So in this time when I was, in ninth class so my brother was also getting elder so he also stayed in state of i um, mean in front of my uncles and my grandfather and he said that no never you you could never do like this until until nargis will choose a her husband by her own self so of course means it is the story of several and several years but i don't want to means of course it's, several things happen in my life but i don't want to make it uh, um, but of course it was not easy and it was very hard time and uh, I could not say that how it was for me that on that time of my school but, but your, your drive for 
education and your mother wanted you to have an education there was that there the whole time also in your mind this was you know this was this was the thing that it makes me always that i have to be educated so my cousin was like an example for me so i just think that if my mom will be uneducated like my um, like my cousin mom so of course now i will be the wife of he or any uh, like the one who was so my mom and my uh, my aunt was somehow like an example for my for me and my family that I was seeing the difference between an educated and an educated and educated woman. And you know, however, it was very stress on my on my mind. It was always, but uh, it makes me stronger, and it makes me that I have to study more. I have to be an educated uh, girl. I have to study and study and study, and it was it makes me that um, you know. After, till third class, I was not in any degrees. I was just getting pass and pass. But I just remembered that after third class, I was on, always in position. I mean, I was always first position, second position, third position, till the time I was in university. I was always in great um, uh, marks I had. And it was because, I again, I will say that I, uh, because I was seeing the difference in my own, in my own family. So um, the life is strange and um, different thing happens. And finally, I um, I mean, I graduated from university, from school. And so on that time, of course, I was in Afghanistan and I gave my intern's exam and uh, I uh, start university. I start university for four years. I was um, I studied literature and uh, journalism and then I got married. And um, I got married with the one who I love and the one who I think that he is a good person for me. It was not only love marriage, it was love and arranged marriage. It was the one that my mom also wanted, my, my father, also, my, my mom and me, of course, uh, the important was me. And um, finally, I got married. And um, now uh, I have two children. And... Um, the one uh, that my uh, my cousin who was sold at first time instead of me she now have five children and uh, she only studied till fifth class hmm. and she was not able to study more um, she was only able to, to to study till fifth class because then she she was supposed to get married and she got married and now she have five children and six is on the way coming on so just think that if I will be that one, so maybe now also I will have five or six children for for my maybe 15 or uh, 10 years of my marriage, maybe. Of course, it's my 12th year. It's my 12th year start just newly that I got married. And uh, maybe I was also a fifth grade student and... Uh, I will be not like this standing, sitting in front of you, all high educated women and sitting you and talking about my whole life. Uh, so that girl will be me. But uh, my cousin was that one. And it was all because of educated woman, mom and uneducated woman. So this was all and the things that happened in my life and until I was um, I got married. So finally, I got married. And now I have two children, the elder one and the smaller one. I have two boys. And um, the good point for me was that I was married in a good family. And, and, I, and, I, and I had a very supportive husband that he always supported me. And um, it was my fourth class of university when I got married. And then soon I have my son and then my second son. And uh, when I, when I have my second son, so I had my master's degree and, you know, it was very hard uh, to be, uh, to have master's degree in a governmental university in Afghanistan. It was all very, very hard to be past a governmental university. But uh, I was married, you know, sometimes some women think that when they got married, so they say that it's okay. Now it's okay for me. Um, I could not study because I had children and I have my husband, I have my family, so I could not study. But uh, my message will be for the all women who are watching me. I will say that uh, I don't, I don't think so that uh, marriage, like a husband, like um, 
children it could not avoid you any time if you could get education so i have my higher education after my uh, married after when i was the mom of two children so it was also because of my husband and my families uh, of course i was also living in a joint family with my father in law with my mother in law with my sister in law and my brother in law and with their children but i have a very supportive last family so it was always in my mind that uh, i have to get more education i have to study more i have to study more i have to study study and study so the only dream the always dream that i had and while i was child i said that when i get elder so i have to be a teacher i have to be teacher like my mom because my mom was a teacher so when i was in school so i had this point in my mind so when i went to university i say no being a teacher is less for me i have to be a professor in university i have to teach in university so the thinking of my mind and it just like uh, it grows up a little bit and it comes in my mind that i have to teach in university i don't have to teach in school so i tried hard to be uh, as a university professor and i waited for being a professor for several and several and several years and to tell you that i give university exam three time for being a professor in university and finally i was pass in university as a working as a assistant professor and then professor it was my third time i always support my myself by my own self and i always encourage myself by my own self so it was the first dream that it comes true to me that it was the dream of till i had from my childhood and i said that i will be one day the professor of university and the good point for me was that i become university professor and the second thing that comes on my mind was always my childhood i was thinking okay how could i support other girls or how could i support other especially women that i have to educate them i have to tell them that uh, uh, education is education education is life education could give you a life and this is all, of course it could be like uh, it saved you a life so you have to get education and this was the interest that i had with my uh, skill so i just think that uh, okay only being in university it could not solve my problem it could not let me to go to the point that i want so i started uh, to be as an activist in media mm. and uh, i started to speak whatever i had and the messages that i had i had to uh, pass it in media through through media to people and i so the first time i just start from rights of women uh, means um, right of their education and uh, a woman that they were getting married in their early ages so this was my topics that i was usually talking in media about so i was i just start means professor degree was always with me so i start working as an a volunteer in uh, television and media so always talking about women about a woman education early marriages early marriages so as i told you it was all because of my childhood that i had in my uh, my mind so i say how could i me treat people to not do like this so that uh, so it happened several years i was like this i was working and i was talking in media here there here everywhere so one day i just hear that um, uh, uh, means uh, um, ministry of Minis municipality one of our municipality of kabul municipality uh, the mayor of kabul municipality wanted me to be his spokesperson mm. so that was a very high uh, position on that time for me because i was working as a uh, as a governmental official so i also i just think that could i and will i be able to so i just went to have an interview and after the interview they just on one day they they just uh, reply me back that you could join the work from tomorrow so it was <laughs> i never thought to be to work as a governmental official but uh, i started working as a governmental official and um, 
Uh, it was, I think, around 2018 and 2019, I was uh, a spokesperson of Kabul municipality. Means it was a very uh, great position on that time. And I was the first female spokesperson in Kabul municipality. Uh, for means from 100 years around, there were no any female spokesperson, but I was the first one as a female that I was being a spokesperson for a very big municipality. So I worked there around uh, um, one and a half year. And that was also the time, the day that I was hired in municipality. Um, so as Britta also said that I had already written four books. And um, one of my books uh, was the best book of 2018. And the day that I was introducing as a spokesperson, they were going to introduce me as a spokesperson to Kabul municipality. I just heard, um, uh, I just got an email that uh, my book was the best book of 2018. So I still could not tell you, and I, I could means. Um, uh, I could not say that how much uh, I was happy on that time is uh, I could not image that these two very important point will come uh, with me for me in one day. So it was and I got the best book award of uh, 2018. Meanwhile, I was working as a spokesperson and very quickly it happened uh, that uh, I went to defense ministry as the um, uh, as the advisor for the a deputy minister of defense as an educator advisor because I was working in education. Uh, so I was getting, uh, means a little bit, I was getting more involved in government and government and government. So this time I was just thinking that maybe I'm getting a little bit farther from my own field. So I just think that, okay, university is always with, with me. So of course, you know that you, as a professor, you don't have to go to university every day. You just have to go two or three days. So your period were different. So I start my organization on that time on Afghanistan with my some friends and we were working and education on that time. Uh, so that means with my other duties that I had around. And um, so I was having my that means this like an organization was a part of my life and being university professor, being a spokesperson. And then after that, being uh, the advisor for the deputy minister of defense was the other duty. So I was for a few years on that, too. And after that, uh, I went to become a director a director of a very huge ministry. It was Independence Directory of Local Governance. And it was just like um, um, Afghanistan have 34 provinces and 34 provinces have 34 governors and mayor and deputy mayors and somehow like this. And I was director for public awareness and media. So it was a very huge position on that time. As a female, it was a very huge position. I mean, it was it was really a honor for me on that time. And uh, I was as a director of media and public awareness for almost uh, one year till uh, 2021 of 15th of August. And 15th of August was unfortunately the day that um, we lose our everything. Taliban came. I lose my university. I lose my uh, I lose my degree. I lose my office. I lose my everything. So, um, you know, if somebody will ask me that, uh, what is stress and how did you feel stress? You know, I I so I. I have several things in my life, but nothing made me that much weaker like the day that Taliban came and how much it makes me weaker, weak and how much it stressed me. So, yeah, so just think that when you are educated and you have everything, but suddenly you just lose everything. So I was, I lose my everything. I was not a Nargis like your city, like you're seeing me now. I was completely stressed. And uh, I had the worst period of my life on that time. And I was highly in um, danger because I was working as a, um, as a governmental official and I was always talking against Taliban. I was always talking about the early marriages. I was always talking about the girl education. And uh, this was making, it was not, so on that time, you know, I was not only thinking about my own self that uh, maybe something will happen on me. 
I was thinking about my family. Okay, that if something happened on me, so it's okay. But how it will be if God forbid, and if anything happened because of me to my family member, to my children, to my last family, mm -hmm. uh, to my husband. So uh, time just go through around, and uh, I was in Afghanistan for almost seven months after Taliban, and I experienced the worst time of my life. I stop my everything around. I stop my classes. I stop my working because I will. I was not able to teach something for people. I was not nervous like you are seeing me now. I I completely lose myself. I was working on myself for ten years on that time that I have to lose my weight. But you know, on that six and seven month, I lose my tenth kilo. So ten kilo. Um, it was not less, it was too much. And it was only because I was stressed. Mm. And um, I, I mean, I was not on diet. I was not uh, going to gym or anything, but I was stressed on that time because that's why. So in the six and seven months, I just start applying to every country, to America, to London, to Germany, to every country around, to at least anybody could come and um, at least they could evacuate me with my family. So, um, you know, on that uh, period of time, I changed my house more than five and six times. On that period of time, I was not work. I was not living in my home, in my own country. So, at first, when I was, I decided to uh, to means leave Afghanistan. So, of course, my last family was not angry with me because of the love that they had with me and with uh, with their. Um, uh, with their grandchildren and with their son. So it was hard for me too. I never wanted to leave Afghanistan, but until I was supposed, I have to leave Afghanistan. And um, because they see that I was, how I was in danger and I was not at the house. I was, I have to change my house day by day. I was too much on threat. Every day I just received different uh, letters from the different parts of Taliban that uh, you had to do this, you have to do that. On that day you speak on media against us on that day and this and that. But finally and finally, so, I was able to come to Germany. I came to Germany and I was in Pakistan. So I went to Pakistan. I have my interview and then I came to Germany. So when I came to Germany, uh, so from last this one year and few months, um, I get my energy once again and I start working on myself once again. I start from my from my students that I left them. I start from the from the girls that I left them from university. So I start um, registering my own organization here and I start teaching them online classes. I start begging for them, for my students, for for different people around me, how could they help me? How could they help my students who are in Afghanistan? And I start teaching them my own language, English, Pashto, journalism, uh, computer science. And uh, of course it was the basic one, computer and this was, but my, as I told you, my uh, field is literature and journalism. And meanwhile, I had some uh, friends that they were supporting my students um, and um, to study nursing classes. It was Haydn classes, all were Haydn classes. So um, this were all that uh, I'm going through means I'm just doing this all from last, uh, the days that I came here in Germany. So this all that I'm doing when I, when I came to Germany uh, means uh, working for the girls, uh, working for their education. This all was like volunteer works. I did not get anything from that, but I get love. Mm. And I just think that every one of them is Nargis and every one of them will have the, the future like me. If, uh, if they are uneducated, so of course they could be sold anytime and anytime they could uh, just lose their everything. So all these people, it means, you know, now also the people who are living in Afghanistan, they're asking me that, Nargis, okay, just leave them now, leave everything. You are in a good country. You have everything you around. So just stop talking about Taliban against them and stop this always fighting for the girls, fighting for the girl, fighting for the girl. So in my opinion that, as I said, that I think every, I just see in every girl my own face. Mm -hmm. I see that if they are not educated, so they will be like my cousin. 
So this is all the reason that uh, I say that uh, educated mom, educated woman could uh, be everything. I am here today in front of you all because of my educated mom. And the last thing that uh, I forget to say that the last thing that maybe I had too much things to say around, but uh, I have to make it shorter. Um, so the things that I was doing all volunteer, um, once a day, I just uh, um, got an email from Sweden and uh, it was quite shocking for me. And uh, it was written that, uh, yeah, Ms. Nargis, you are uh, awarded for the World Peace Award. I just say, uh, get shocked and I was just thinking that, um, no, no, I don't think so. It, it could not be me. It is not for Nargis. I just go through their website. I just started in, um, searching them on Facebook and Instagram because I said, no, it, I don't think so that I will be valuable for this award. But uh, they called me, they emailed and emailed me. But, you know, they um, they buy the ticket also for me. But on that time also, I say, no, it is impossible. I went to Sweden on that time also. I say, no, I, I don't think so. Till the time that I got the award. And uh, it was my, it, that was my second time. First time I was awarded for the best book of the year in 2018. And second time I was awarded for the World Peace Award in 2023 in this year in the month of um, July. And um, last year was the day, uh, the year, yeah, I forget to say that the book that I, uh, I was awarded for the best book of the year. I mean, people really liked that. People admired that. And they wanted me to republish that, with means renew that. And finally, I published it once again. And uh, last year, it was published once again. So <laughs> this is the book. This was, I mean, the book that that was the best book of that year. And I republished it once again last year. And it, uh, it is somehow um, 285 pages. And I just, it was like a research of a very big research. And, you know, I received my, this book just this year. My book was published and my book was with several people around, but I could not get this hard copy of my book until one of my friends, when they go to Afghanistan and they ask me that, okay, what should I bring for you? I say nothing, but just bring me my own book. I just want to have the um, hard copy of my book and I just wanted to have it in my hand. I have to see the, um, the result of my hard working and I have to show to my student that this is the result of an educated girl and this is the result of that uh, when you are educated so you could uh, get anything you want so at the last i will say that um, i think nothing is impossible uh, in your life until um, until uh, you just think that it is impossible you 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 are the one who are making everything possible and you are the one who always uh, try to um, uh, like uh, make yourself by your own self. So, um, yeah, so I think so. Uh, I, I'm just praying for the day that hopefully I could have the student that I have my, around myself, it's uh, around more than 200 and 300 around. But uh, I would I would love to have my students, not only these students, of course, when I was in Afghanistan, it was too much, but now it's not that, it's limited. I would love to have them not two or 300, I would love to have them thousand and thousand around them and to pardon and pardon to tell them that get education an educated mom could uh, make an environment of course uh, we could never have a peaceful country without an educated mom so this is the reason that we are not having a peaceful country because we got um, a very small uh, percentage of peace uh, educated women so at the last point education education and education thank you thank you so much Nargis uh, what a what a life and i can see how people would think that you are much older i mean this is incredible what experiences you have and to give up all that uh, you know all that influence and the position you had gained in afghanistan and then suddenly overnight you had to give it all up you know for your own safety for your 
family safety and to come to a new country. I know you go to German classes now to learn a new language and to establish yourself, you know, in the German society. So now, Nargis, it was actually at, at, um, in Stockholm when you got the World Peace Awards that I met you and I heard your speech and I was so uh, impressed by you. That's when, when we first get to know each other. But now I want to open up the floor to, for questions. I, I'm sure many people have questions here. I think it's so beautiful to hear how you all the time is mentioning your mother, your mother as an educated woman was paving the way also for you to be strong. And, and of course, you know, there's a lot of curiosity about your mother now also. Is, is she okay? Is, I mean, how, where did she get her strength from? Your mother, you know? <laughs> Yeah, she's good and she's fine. She's living in Turkey with my brother. And um, yeah, so I will say that uh, because she was an educated mom and because she don't want her daughter, she, she want her daughter to get more educated than her. She always said that if I'm bachelor degree, so my daughter should not be a bachelor student. My my daughter should have a master degree. Or if I am, means my daughter should always be higher than me, not lesser than me. So this was the point means my mom always had. And I forget to say that when I came to Germany, I start my second master in international organization. And now I'm student and Poland and Warsaw. And I'm going to finish my second master in international organization just in this December. Mm -hmm. uh, here I have a question from somebody, Nargis, wondering, is your book written in Persian language? Yeah, exactly. It is written in Pashto language. So as you know, the local languages of Pash um, Afghanistan is Pashto and Dari. Is it going to be translated into English? I would love to translate it, um, but uh, uh, I, I did not get any opportunity still to translate it. But um, I just trying um, to write a book about my own self more. But the problem is, I mean, this is the thing that it comes newly in my mind, but uh, maybe it takes a little bit time and it takes a little bit um, around like, uh, um, like a people around how to start it and um, how to do it. Hmm. Uh, there is another question. Somebody's wondering also about your dad, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So as I said at the beginning, uh, yeah, I just saw the chat. Uh -huh. um, my father, my dad was an army. He was a doctor. Um, so he was also supporting me. Um, I think so. And every family, um, mom and dad, they always want their best of their, their daughters and their um, sons always for their children. But um, of course, maybe, uh, maybe because um, mom, are a little bit more um, near to the daughters. I, I don't know. I just think sometimes somehow like this because she was always mean. She was means uh, like father was going morning till night and mom was till the half day and she was more uh, means mom are always till the half time they are with children. So they both were supporting me and they were supported um, um, supporting parents and I think so. This is the reason that uh, I got at least my. Um, Am I, am I means my, uh, am I, yeah, when I was, I graduated from school and when university. So as I said that I got married in the last year of my, uh, my, my university. So I had my, uh, my, my means the, um, the in, uh, my university and my school. And when I was a girl means when I was a single and my, and my dad family. So of course they were supporting me and they, it was the reason that uh, I got at least to become an educator. Hmm. Let's see, do we have some other questions here? Uh, I guess you can see the chat also, Nargis. Also yeah. the mic is open, anyone can ask a question. Okay, yeah. Is there a question here from somebody? Hello? Hello. Hi Nargis, Hi. nice to see you from Finland. So actually I was thinking that what are your books about and how old were you when you started uh, writing books? Yeah, so 
my books are usually it is about um, as i say i was my field was literature uh, so i always thought uh, that uh, the one of the reason that in our country is like not a progressive country because we are not working on our children so i started to write about children about the literature of children about how to guide your children about how to make them interesting uh, and trust for books and for school and somehow like this so this is also it is written um, like the uh, mashum adabiyatu lik larkhud mean how to write a literature for children and this was like curriculum for university so maybe i think so in europe it is not um, this is a very basic thing because they they it means they had a, a, a special curriculum for their children but in afghanistan it was very new thing it was completely a new thing to hear for them that uh, that we have to teach our children to say so they only think that our children only need like mathematics like english like persian like dari like it means nothing more but as you people know that our children not only need the studies of our schools so this is the, re- the reason that means in european country they usually try on their children to teach them something out of their schools like story books like how to uh, teach them like how to make them interested to book like how to uh, means do this or that so this is the book i all about that and the second book is about the freedom and the third book is about um the we call them azadi hmm. thank you because i think that the books obviously are very important for children and to read is very good for children but uh, how, how that this, the thing was also that you were so young when you already thought about how to educate children so i think that's amazing uh, yeah yeah i just forget to say that i start writing on my book uh, when i was in my master degree when i had my master mm-hmm. degree okay. so on that time to um i got my second child uh, when i was master student when i was in my first uh, master degree uh, first uh, semester i could not forget that uh, Uh, i give birth to my uh, to my second child uh, when it was my exams of my university so <laughs> the, so on that time also i w- i had a job and i was student of university too i think that was a very tough time but uh, when i just remember say so say good i had my master degree i had my child i had uh, my job too yeah so that was the time and it was means uh, it was always in my mind that uh, how could i write something and actually the books are only uh, one sided uh, things and i had written articles too that but it is a small small article that is usually published in, uh, and uh, different sides have something around i must say that you are a hard working person thank you <laughs> I was going to ask you Nargis how do you balance family life and and and, <laughs> and your ambitions and and everything that you're doing you're doing everything at the same time huh you know i think this is um, several people are asking me always people are asking me um, means this generation means like my own generation uh, means they're asking me okay you're married why you get married that much early don't you think it is a little bit earlier so why it happens like this and so why it, it is impossible you could not do that and this and so several thing blah blah like this around i say i usually said that um, don't think that merit is uh, like marriage is a kind of barrier for you for you merit could not be a barrier for any woman it depends by the a woman by their own self that how much she is proactive and how much she wants something so mm-hmm. i start my means my career more after my marriage means before my marriage i was just like a student of uni- university i could not make that much but after my marriage means i had a, a family but um, 
I had my job and I, I was just uh, doing around. And um, again, I will say that uh, it depends on women that how do they um, manage this. I think so not only me, but several women are like this, that they are uh, not only managing their house life, they are managing their housewife, their work and their work working area too. And I was doing too, means a house was something in this side and working was on this side. But I love to be, um, means to, to have all the sides equally. And meanwhile, to have my own self first, because first I'm important. That if I will be good, so of course, I could keep my family good. I could keep my husband good. I could keep um, care of my children, my husband, my family. So the most important point is first for me, I have to take care of my own self as every woman should first. Hello, Nargis, can I ask something? Yeah, please. Hello, nice to see. I'm, I'm, it's, I don't know, it's a very complex story for me. And I'm trying to understand more that, you know, when you were working, you know, in university and then you went on and you were working in the government. And it seemed at that time, like you were the first woman, you know, that had that um, different position. So you were working in a very male dominated society with all of these things happening but even that must have been so challenging to work with all of the men and to come in on that level with them so that's one of the things I was trying to understand plus the fact that that book became a bestseller or the best book you know is quite incredible so you know, for, for that response from society, for that book to be recognized and valued is another thing that's incredible. And then the Taliban came and then you were put, you know, obviously in, in this terrible situation that now you're in Germany. So, and the other thing that I'm, I'm trying to figure out as well is that cousin of yours now with, is it pregnant with her sixth child? And I, I'm trying to understand, you know, her mom, was it extremely painful for her mom or did she think this is how it is? Was she, because she wasn't that educated, did she just think this is normal, this is part of the of our society, this is what happens? Or was she going crazy? Or was there a difference because your mom was educated? So you think, no, this isn't, this isn't okay. So those, I don't know if that question has come up clearly, but I'm trying to understand for Afghanistan today and for all of the women and girls and people, you know, that are within that structure, what could we do as an international community or how could we support you and to understand a little bit better ourselves? What do you see for the future? Thanks. Yeah, first, uh, thank you, uh, Amanda. Um, I love to see you once again after our Cyprus uh, yeah. trip. <laughs> yeah, so first, I would like to say that um, means the reason that we are fighting for women's rights is that why do we are fighting for them? Because when you are illiterate, you don't know about your rights. Mm -hmm. You don't know that if something is happening on you, is it your right or it is out of your right? Or it is like sometime, something like cruelty. So an educated mom will understand that this is my right. I have to get education. I have to choose my husband by my own self. I have this right. I have this right. And I have that right. But an illiterate woman could not understand. I mean, they, they don't know about their rights. So for my aunt, it means for, the, for my cousin mom, as I say that she was an illiterate woman. Of course, she don't want her daughter to be like this. But... Uh, but talking with a man for a, a woman that uh, she was, uh, she I means she was, of course, she was not that much um, educated to have uh, logic with his grandfather, uh, with his uh, father in law. So, of course, he also argued with him, but she was not capable of that. And finally, my grandfather became say, okay. You could not say anything. It's okay. And this is my decision. And I have to do it with uh, Nargis Kazans. And now she have her five children and her, she's pregnant with her six children, sixth child. And uh, as I say, she is in Afghanistan. She was in a in a province. So I'm from Lugar. 
and it is a province of Afghanistan, but I had lived in Kabul and capital of Afghanistan. Uh, so when she was married, she was living, she was also living in Kabul, but when she get married, she, so she went to Logar and it was like a village. She was, she had her whole life in a village. So she is now only five, fifth grade student. She only studied till fifth class. And um, the, the second thing that you asked me that how it is possible, I will again say that it depends on your own struggle first. It depends on your own decision. It depends that how much you trust by your, you, yourself, by your own self. As I said that I was the first spoke person in Kabul, the first female spoke person in Kabul municipality. So um, I think I, we are going uh, out of time, but I have the photos in my mobile that uh, I will show you the, the pictures that I had uh, when I was a spokesperson for Kabul municipality, we had 60 around directors, I means six zero directors. And I was the only female director between all of them. Oh my God. It was not easy, you know, means how you are dressing, how you are speaking, how is your makeup, where is your scarf, is something looking of your body? And which color have you used? That was not uh, easy, you know, to manage that all. But um, but I did it. <laughs> but it, yeah. um, we're over time, but I'll read, can I say it? No, I'm just thinking because in Ireland, we had different things that happened in the past with them. Um, we have these things called the Magdalene um, laundries, where if girls or young women became pregnant, you know, it was a great shame on the family and they would send their children to this Magdalene laundry with the nuns and they'd have to wash all the clothes to wash away their sins. And then their children, they were really looked down upon in society. Then later their children were sent off, many of them to America or to orphanages. And many times I think today, how how was that possible? I know there was that pressure socially, but how did the, the mothers do that to their own daughters? So I'm just trying to, even in our own history, trying to understand, did they love their daughters any less back then? Or what was it that there was that social pressure or whatever it was that we went along with certain things even though today in Ireland no way would that ever happen so I'm thinking as well maybe in Afghanistan I'm just trying to understand and you know how is it there and just I, I feel really for your cousin I just you know I just is she doing okay uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand exactly that. Uh, I mean, the first part, I did not understand completely. Oh, what do you mean by that? We have something that happened that in present day Ireland, this socially could not happen. But maybe the last Magdalene laundry closed down in just at the end of um, in the in the 90s, 92, 95. So it's not that long ago, really, within the last, you know, 100 years, we have had a situation where many daughters were, if they became, if they were pregnant, they would be sent away from their family to be kind of incarcerated in a, in a, in a, a convent with nuns. And they would wash laundry clothes that would yeah, wash yeah, away for their sins. So that's the point. That would yes. never happen now. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So yeah, if you get uh, pregnant before you are married, so it is like kind of sin. Uh, yeah. Like it is sin in our religion too, and um, it is kind of very shame. And um, um, means, as I told you before, uh, the worst and the worst time is now going on in Afghanistan for women. So just think that you could not get a beauty parlor. You could not go to school. You could not go to university. Uh, you could not go to a travel um, alone. When you, when you are traveling around to a little bit far place, you have to have somebody like, like Mahram, it's called Mahram, like a bodyguard of men bodyguard. So it happens, uh, Amanda, it happened in Afghanistan too. And there are villages uh, that it happens, it really happens like this with women. And uh, we saw maybe there are, there are different stories of women like this, that they get 
pregnant earlier or there are some different things around happening with them and um, yeah they are kept in different room and different they are beaten and beaten yeah it is unfortunately it is still going on in Afghanistan too but it is usually in villages okay Mm -hmm. Big we have to uh, we have a if, if maybe just one more question because i think we're running out of time Big okay i have i have a comment can i say a comment okay um because um i you mentioned how you how you have been balancing all the different aspects in your life, you know, family and work and all the things you are doing and and how you and how you know when you were talking about that, I felt yeah, that is your next book, Nargis. You have to, you know, you have to share this kind of thing. How 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 you how you can um um. Yeah, the way you, you can value yourself and how you can uh, um, raise yourself up in these situations you have been. Yeah, that nice is, to that is a self improvement, it could be a self improvement book. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you, Vekidas. It is uh, nice to see you again. I, I think so. Um, I don't, I don't our, past, I don't want to. our past life uh, should not, uh, means it should make us stronger. Yeah. It should yeah. not make her weaker. Mm. I mean, whatever happened to me in my childhood, this is the reason that I am stronger today. It should not make me weak. As, I, as we said, that every uh, hard time that it comes on you, strong people are the people who learn from that hard time. Mm. If you see, um, means uh, behind every um, a happy person and a successful uh, person is always a very um, a different story around and different thing happening to them. And good uh, are, I think, good are for them the people who learn from their past who don't be weaker for that. As at the beginning of my speech, I say, I don't want to talk about my past because I don't want it to make me hurt. Uh, I usually talk about my future and what am I today? I am today a professor, I still have my degree. Of course, I'm not in university anymore, but I have my degree and uh, I have my high qualification. I have a good name and I have people who love me. I have people who really support me. This is important for me. And the ambition that I have for the girls, I am, I'm just thinking that now a little bit, a little bit step by step, step by step, I'm getting uh, near to that. That one day I will just see my uh, country that I could get nobody without education. I could get everyone with education, I could get everyone educated. And uh, as Amanda also asked that, how could we help uh, people in Afghanistan? I think uh, every one of you is, uh, every one of you have a louder voice than me because you all had lived several years around in Europe, you are here, but I'm a newcomer. So the every voice of you who are raised for Afghanistan, it means for me and it means for the people in Afghanistan. As you see that now Afghanistan is completely forgotten and from last two and a half years, we just see that girls are just like, um, like, like, like they're like in a prison and it is getting worse for them, not better for them. And the second thing is that there are still um, hidden classes for them. There are still uh, hidden things helping them. How could we help them? There are some uh, ways that I am doing by my own self. I think for now, this also, these small, small things could also mean around more. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nargis. And I think that this is something we will uh, continue to talk about uh, this kind of project that I know that you have initiated of how to help uh, the young women in Afghanistan to get education uh, online. Like you're talking about the hidden way somehow. 
yeah, yeah. So we can continue. And, yeah, but I think our self here. Yeah, this yeah, is a really. Oh, somebody is talking. No. Anyway, I think your example is actually perfect for this. Uh, her story. Her story means there are so many women's story that needs to be told. You know, history is mostly about his story. If we if we look at the past. And uh, I think the way that you have such a vision for yourself and what you want to do is and com combine with your ambition. And it's, it's amazing, actually. And it's an incredible inspiration for all of us, uh, Nargis. So we're very happy and um, continue to write uh, on your book. I know that <laughs> you have been asked to write for, for uh, uh, Moriko Hori also for mm -hmm. Japan. So uh, we want to continue to hear from you and to hear and yeah, and to follow you because I know that there is a lot of things planned in the future <laughs> for you. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, Nargis, and for everybody that could be here. And uh, let's keep in contact and support each other and empower each other. Thank you so much, Nargis. And uh, the way that you that you have your beautiful family, the way you you're talking about your mother, I mean, it's all these factors that we feel are so important in Women Federation for World Peace. So so happy to have you here with us. Thank you, everybody, and have a very good night. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for yeah. all uh, around. And um, the last <laughs> message for me is that uh, whoever is watching this video. I will once again say that uh, this story have I want to mm, means maybe um, it will inspire somebody and they will learn from somebody that uh, an educated mom what could an educated woman do and what could a married girl a mother do of course married a mom could always do everything but again depend to women as always women think their own self very lower but I think we are the one who support ourselves first and we we have to keep our dream bigger and bigger if we keep them bigger so bigger thing will happen to us and if we keep them smaller so small thing will come to you so i always keep my dreams very <laughs> large <laughs> and this is the reason that good thing happened to me <laughs> yes. with these words yeah that's a good ending thank you very much Nargis let's keep our, our, our dreams big and step up step exactly. up to the next level let's all exactly. step up to the next level thank exactly. you thank you